We praise God and we bear witness that there is no God except the one God. Today is the first day of a new year, it is January 1st, and I don't see a single person with a hangover in here. The first day of, the, of a new year, 1988, is also the first day of the rest of your life. And the Quran provides the ways and means of starting all over again. Anytime you want to. You can forget completely about the past and start as a totally new person, beginning a totally new life. The concept of repentance. Repentance, returning to God. Being unaware for a while and now deciding to return and be with God. I have put uh, uh, the theme of the new translation of Quran on the wall here for you and I'm going to read it because I wanted to share it with you. Well, before I read it, I'd like to say that uh, finally we've discovered the secret of happiness, the most elusive of all human uh, searches. The secret of happiness is in, is in this uh, short theme here. Happiness is a quality of the soul, the real person, not the body. Therefore, a body that achieves all the material successes it longs for, money, fame, power, good looks, carnal satisfactions, often belongs to an unhappy person. The real person's happiness depends totally on the degree of growth, development, and fulfillment of the real person. This book, the Quran, maps the road to perfect happiness for both body and soul, both in this temporal world and in the eternal hereafter. So this is the secret of happiness. And uh, uh, you've seen the video that uh, we made a couple of weeks ago, and they mentioned in it Eddie Murphy, in his uh, interview with Barbara Walters and how he owns this big estate in New Jersey. He has his family, his mother, seeing him successful. He's got the success, the fame, the movies, the TV, uh, millions of dollars, five cars, two Rolls Royces, a Porsche, uh, a Mercedes, a Corvette. Yet he said that he was not happy. So what does a human being want in this world? Is this what, isn't this what everybody out there thinks they want? The millions of dollars, the Rolls Royces, the Mercedes, the, the estates, the palaces, and he's not happy. So this proves once again, this has been proven over and over, that material success does not bring happiness. If the soul is shrunk and not fed and not nourished, there is no happiness. This is the secret of happiness. Nobody can be happy unless the soul is nourished, and develops, and grows. Just try not to feed your body for one day and see how miserable your body is. Try for one day not to feed your body or give it water. The soul is exactly like that. If, if the soul is not nourished, but in our dimension here we do not feel the pain. It is reflected in what Eddie Murphy told Barbara Walters that he was not happy. It's reflected in that. This is the secret of happiness. A few weeks ago they had the Barbara Hutton story on the TV and many of you saw it. It's the same thing, wealth, fame, anything she wanted. Yet you saw her in the program trying to commit suicide. This is a true, true story, how miserable she was. 
the exact opposite of happiness. So what does everybody out there want? You want money, fame, good looks, success? But then, if the soul is not nourished, there is no happiness. The nourishment for the soul, God teaches us in the Quran, just like, like is mentioned in the theme here, that the Quran maps the road to perfect happiness. And this starts the minute you wake up. We've been learning here from the Quran that when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you say is Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Right there, it's a good snack for the soul. It's a bit of nourishment. The minute you open your eyes in the morning, you say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, La ilaha illallah. There's no God except the one God. The Quran teaches us specifically when you admire anything that belongs to you, you must say, Masha Allah. This is the Arabic, you can say it in English. This is what God gave me in English. Say, Masha Allah, you admire your car, your children, your spouse, your house, anything that belongs to you. And this invokes protection for your belongings, and it is nourishment for the soul. Because the soul is a piece of God. And when you say, Masha Allah, your soul grows. Another bit of nourishment. You praise God. You say, Alhamdulillah, thank God or praise God when something good happens, when you finish eating. When you start your car, you say, Bismillah. And you, when you start eating, you say, Bismillah, in the name of God. And when you finish, you say, Alhamdulillah, thank God, praise God. When you see something wonderful, the sunrise or the sunset or a flower or a fruit or anything God created or a cute cat, you say, Subhanallah, God be glorified. Subhanallah, God be glorified. Anytime you think of God because your soul is a piece of God, your soul will be nourished. Don't just, don't just eat the apple or the orange. Think, who made this? Where did it come from? Where did the apple come from? The perfect flavor, the perfect sugar, the perfect texture, the crunchiness. Who designed this? Where did it come from? It came from the air, by the way. And the, and the liquid from the soil. That's where it came, the apple came from. It starts as, as a little ovary. And then it grows. The leaves of the tree collect carbon dioxide from the air and link it together in chains. The sugar is carbon. C, 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 C. Six carbons make one, one molecule of sugar. So the leaves of the tree, photosynthesis, you heard of photosynthesis, and the energy from the sun, and the water from the soil. This is it. This makes the apple. And all the other chemicals. Don't just eat the apple to feed your body. Eat the apple and feed your soul by saying, Subhanallah, God be glorified. Because the body you're going to throw away. The soul is you, and you're going to last forever. The best nourishment of all is the contact prayer, making contact with God. These are casual snacks. MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah, inshaAllah. You should never say, I'm going to do something the next hour or at 2 o'clock or tomorrow or next month or next week without saying, inshaAllah, God willing. You're going to shock your American friends first, but then they will get used to it and they will respect you later. And you will nourish your soul as you remind them and remind yourself. Say, insha'Allah. So these are the, the snacks for the soul. And they may barely spare you misery, be it temporary or eternal, hell. It might. But the best nourishment is the five daily contact prayers. These are specifically prescribed by God at <coughs> specific times with specific utterances and specific movements 
It's a numerical code. It's a combination that, that causes contact with God. Then your soul really grows. And like you heard on the tape the other day, the soul grows in leaps and bounds, which makes nourishment a lot more crucial and a lot more important than your meals for the body. Because, okay, you're going to give your body three meals today, how much will you grow today? The children probably grow at a higher rate. But what is the maximum you grow? One pound? Hopefully not. <laughs> but the soul, if there is a weight for the soul, you may grow by 10 tons. The soul has a weight in the other dimension, not in this dimension. In this dimension, I think they determined that the soul is one ounce. They put a dying person on a scale, and they weighed him before he died, and weighed him after he died. And the difference was one ounce. <laughs> it's a scientific research. They wanted to catch the soul scientifically in the material world. <laughs> But in the other dimension, wow, you know, when they go to the other dimension, they're going to see the angels and the gens and all the other creatures of the other dimension. And one prayer, very easily, makes you grow by 10 tons. 10 tons. Iman, how many tons do you carry in your 18 wheelers? 80 tons? 80,000 pounds. Over 2,000 is 20 tons. 80,000 pounds. Over 2,000 is 40 tons. Yes, 40 tons. Yes. Okay, you can you can load a man's truck with just one prayer. <laughs> I don't think you'll forget this now. <laughs> so this makes feeding, nourishing the soul, all the more important. In Surah 22, or is it 21? Let me make sure so we can go and refer to it. 20, 21. It says that the reckoning is approaching while the people are totally unaware. The reckoning for the people is fast approaching, while they are totally unaware, heedless. Reckoning of what? It's calculating how much you deposited in your account, how much growth you attained for yourself. And you can't just wait and wait and wait and then try to feed a shrunken soul. There is such a time where it's impossible. You have to do it every day. You have to do as much as you can. This is what we're really here for. The reckoning for the people is fast approaching. That day will come sooner than you think. Because life goes fast. For the young people, it seems so far away. The reckoning for the people is fast approaching while they are totally unaware, heedless. Did you hear all the halabaloo and the parties last night for the bodies that they throw away? They did nothing for the soul. If anything, they did things against the soul. It went into the negative. The health department was distributing condoms to the bars, so they give the drinks and condoms. <laughs> I mean, what is this? You can be sure most of it is not legitimate relationships. I mean, Satan had a heyday last night. And these are negative. The souls go into the negative. That wasn't the news all day yesterday. You know, don't forget, get your condoms. <laughs> when 
whenever a new reminder comes to them from the Lord, they listen to it thoughtlessly. I mean, you remind them that they're going to throw away their body and their soul is going to remain forever and will be assigned a rank forever on the day of eternity. And they are thoughtless, they are all sure, you know, they're, they're so unaware. Their hearts are distracted. Satan succeeded in distracting them. And the wicked confide to each other, is he not just a human being like you? They will not take anything from you, any advice from you. They hate the advice. They hate the truth. Would you accept magic while you see? Their hearts are distracted. And in the second khutbah, inshallah, I will... I think I discovered something I'd like to share with you that will help us uh, not to be distracted. Tubu so, ilallah, repent. Alhamdulillah, wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah, wa ahdahu la sharika lah. Praise be to God, I bear witness that there is only one God. He has no partners. We are a very, very lucky generation. In Surah 56 we were told that The lower heaven is going to be relatively crowded. It's going to be full of all the children who die, all the people who die before the age of 40, and the adults who did not nourish their souls enough. It's going to be like the coach in the plane. Be crowded. First class heaven <laughs> will not be crowded with big seats, comfortable. They all go to the same destination. See? <laughs> But you remember going in the plane and these people sitting in first class looking at you like, I'm in first class. I have a big seat. You know? And you go in there, you squeeze in this coach in the plane. <laughs> you make a seat that you just barely fit in. Especially if you're a little bit heavyweight like myself. You really squeeze in there. So the coach is going to be very crowded. First class, uh, uh, God says in Surah 56, that uh, there will be multitudes of the early generations, which ours is one of them, and few of the later generations. You know, God wills that this generation of ours witnesses a renewal of the message. You know, the, the Christians have gone astray, they have been worshipping Jesus. The Muslims gone totally astray worshipping Muhammad and the saints. And the people forgot about God, and all of a sudden there comes into focus God alone message. With this fantastic miracle that is coming to, to enhance that. I'm sure many, many people thought of it, and I have met a few of them, but they did not have the authorization or the power or, or this mathematical code in the Quran that uh, points at uh, God alone. 19 means God is one, God alone. And this is our generation. You can be sure that subsequent generations will be fewer of the people. I mean, here we are, we're pounding on each other's head every day. Let's worship God alone. Let's worship God alone. Uh, you're idol worshiping. I am idol worshiping. You know, we are reminding we are a lucky generation. There will be multitudes of us, of our generation, inshallah, in first class, in the high heaven. Now, the difference is much greater than first class and coach of the plane. But then, as, as the message, as they move further from our witnessing of the miracle, we are witnessing the miracle before our eyes. And as, as the, they move further, there will be less and less, according to Surah 56. So we are a very lucky generation. And uh, this brings to us more 
privilege, I will not call it responsibility, I will call it privilege, to be much more careful to do our five daily prayers, to observe God, observe His laws, make dhikr continuously. Oh, this reminds me, if we get distracted, the new dhikr, I was listening to the Quran the other day, and the reader in a beautiful voice was saying, uh, the part of Quran where God says, do they think that I do not hear their secrets and their conspiracies? Do they think that I do not hear their secrets and their conspiracies? And when uh, Moses and Aaron said, we're afraid Pharaoh may kill us, God said, don't worry, I'll be with you, I hear and I see. And this inspired me as I was going to sleep two nights ago to, to say, when God hears my secret and my declarations, God knows my secrets. And this evolved gradually until I said, God is here in this room. God is here now in this room. God sees me, hears me. And this is what you have to visualize and materialize. And it has a tremendous, a great effect. I'm sure your soul will grow tremendously. And if you had any devilish thoughts, they will go away. You just visualize God with you. God is in this room, wherever you are. God is here now. God is with me. This is a new dhikr. God is teaching us. And it will help you a lot. It helped me. And this is what I'm sharing with you now. God is with me. God is in this room. He is, see, as we talk now, God is in this room. God is omnipresent in every room, everywhere. And personally, with you, as well as that ant out there by the roses. God is with that ant. God controls everything that the ant is doing. How much food it gets. God is with me. God is here. He hears my secrets. What I'm thinking. And this will, will help a lot. The miracle, I'll just give you a piece of news as to what I'm doing since we're all in this together. What I'm doing now is uh, I'm going to give the, the mathematical miracle of Quran uh, a lot of attention in the coming uh, days and weeks, inshallah. And what I'm doing is I'm making a generic videotape on the miracle. Generic means that it will just have the facts in the video and uh, anybody can dub his or her own language on the tape. So I'm going, I'm going to do the English and the Arabic. We're going to have Muhtasham or Abdullah or both do the Turkish. Gatut will do the Indonesian, Malaysian. Francisco will do the Spanish. Uh, we're going to dig up somebody to do the Urdu and, and so on. Uh, Susan will do the Farsi and the French. So she's good in both. So here, and uh, so we're going to have it in English, Arabic, Urdu, Turkish, Indonesian, Malaysian, Farsi, French. Uh, Eric is going to do it in Swedish. Eric Tornwall. So uh, we will also have these flashcards. These are flashcards. And I can have them by next week. And they help a lot of people, especially that uh, there must be like 75 to 80% of the people who have a mathematical mental block. No? What's one plus one? <laughs> she doesn't know. <laughs> it's called. <laughs> it's called. <laughs> it's called the mathematical <laughs> mental block. A lot of people have them. They're geniuses. <laughs> but these flashcards. <laughs> have to laugh at why. The flashcard <laughs> makes it easy. So the <laughs> we're gonna edit this out. <laughs> so 
Sometimes you get intoxicated, you know, guys. <laughs> this is called the God's intoxication. You know, the smallest thing, you know, the people who drank last night think they were intoxicated, you know. <laughs> and uh, at first, the smallest thing makes him laugh, you know. <laughs> then they wake up in the morning with a huge hangover. And uh, sometimes God's people get like that, you know, the smallest thing makes him laugh out of control. So. This is the title, it says, Mathematical Miracle of Quran. And this says, uh, these are all physical facts. <coughs> and this is the last statement before the, uh, the, the actual facts. The Quran is mathematically coded beyond the human intelligence. This is Arabic and English, by the way. We're going to have a nice size card for everybody. Here is, oh, this is uh, another set, the last one, I promise. It says, the Quran's mathematical code is based on the number 19. And here is fact number one. You will see how simple it is. Fact number one. Opening statement of the Quran, the Basmala, consists of 19 Arabic letters. It's fact number one. Fact number two. The Quran consists of 114 surahs, or 19 times 6. Fact number three. First revelation of Quran was 19 words. Fact number four, first revelation, the 19 words are 76 letters, 19 times 4. First revelation is 19 verses, and it goes on like that. Last revelation was 19 words. So they're all uh, concentrated facts. This is the quick summary. And then what I will have after this will be the pictures from the blue book, for example, where it shows Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim broken down into letters, 19 letters. And then Gatut will say it in Indonesian that these are the documentation now of these facts. This will take only like five minutes, all of them. And then, so we'll come to fact number one, the documentation for fact number one. Gatut will say in Indonesian, the Basmala consists of 19 letters as you see. And anybody can say it in any language. 